Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. Today I'll show you how to enter the recovery mode, what options you get and how to reset your TicWatch Pro 2020 if you encounter any issues. This method that I show you in this video may also work on other Wear OS smartwatches. So let's get started. If it's your first time on my channel, consider subscribing as I do regular videos for various smartwatches like this one, smartphone reviews, tech tutorials and much more. You'll also find a dedicated playlist for TicWatch Pro with more detailed videos like this one. So be sure to check it out. Okay, so before I start, I want you guys to know that I'm not a developer and enter the recovery mode at your sole discretion. This video is a way to show you guys how I access the recovery mode on this TicWatch Pro 2020 and what options I get. I'll try my best to explain you all these options at my best abilities which may not be accurate. Some of these options may be identical on other Wear OS smartwatches. If that's the case, please comment down below as I have already done a video on the developer mode of the Fossil Gen 5 linked at the end of this video. With all that being said, let me show you how to reboot your watch. Reboot is basically a restart and there are two ways to do that. If the screen is working, then go in the settings, scroll down to the system and find restart which will prompt you to confirm and upon confirming the watch will restart. Now let's say for some reason if the screen of your watch is not working or frozen you can sometimes fix this with a simple reset or a reboot. Just keep pressing the top right button until you feel a vibration and you will get the option to power off and restart. And if you don't get any such options then just keep pressing further until the watch restarts by itself with the tick watch on the screen. Now let me quickly show you how to factory reset also known as a hard reset. A little caution over here is that it will erase everything from your watch including apps, games, watch faces, music, images etc. And set your watch as it was when it came out of the box. Also it will automatically disconnect the watch from the phone but I would recommend that you physically remove or forget the watch from the Bluetooth settings page on your phone as well as disconnect the watch from the Wear OS mobile app to avoid any further issue in case if you have to pair it back to the same phone or any other phone nearby. Alright to do that all you have to do is go in the settings scroll down to find systems and find disconnect and reset which will prompt you to confirm and upon confirming the erasing process will start which may take few minutes and after that you have to set it up as a new watch as you did in the first place for which I have done a video linked up here which you can check it out once you are done watching this one. Now if you want to reset the watch when your watch is completely non-functional you can try the recovery mode. Now to enter the recovery mode you have to keep pressing both the top and the bottom right button simultaneously until the tick watch screen appears after which you will enter the bootloader wherein you will find the recovery mode. Now that we are in the bootloader let's talk about the options we get over here. If you pay close attention the options are color coded so I assume green means it's ok to enter, red means be cautious and the last two options are white which I guess are neutral. Anyways the first option is start which basically starts the watch. There are few details like the product name which is catfish underscore ext which was also the case in the fossil gen 5 recovery mode video I did a while back. Then there is the variant which says MTP EMMC, bootloader version number, baseband version, serial number, secure boot which is disabled and the device status which says locked. Keep this one in mind as I'll touch on it later during this video. Now to select the start option press the top right button and to toggle to other option press the bottom right button. So the next option is restart boot loader again with pretty much the same details under it as the previous option. Restart boot loader as the name implies it restarts the boot loader so if I were to select it the watch will restart and come back to this boot loader screen again. So if you don't know what you are doing and your watch just keeps coming back to this screen all you need to do is change this screen to other option by clicking the bottom right button. Let's go to the next option which is recovery mode. 
before we talk about this option let's quickly talk about the last two options uh, and end this video with a detailed explanation of the recovery mode after recovery mode comes the power off which also as the name implies will turn off the watch after which you can start the watch to the normal start the last option in this bootloader is the boot to FFBM mode. Now correct me if I am wrong over here, but based on my research, booting to FFBM is an exclusively manufacturing menu item and would have no value to anyone but the manufacturer. However, the source that I got this information from also says that this option does have the potential to put the smartwatch into a state that may make it unusable as the booting into FBM mode makes the display consistently boot into the same mode over and over again which will prevent the user from utilizing the watch for its normal purpose. So in short don't risk entering this mode and comment down below if you have entered it but I just won't take the chance to enter it. That being said let's talk about the recovery mode. Now let me explain you a few things before we do anything so that you don't mess things up. Ideally, recovery mode is used to apply updates via ADB, which is Android Debug Bridge, apply updates from SD card, wipe data, factory reset, view recovery log and run graphic test, etc. Typically, most people access recovery mode to factory reset a device, especially when the watch is not working or the screen is frozen, yada yada. So with that in context, when you enter the recovery mode, the watch will enter this so-called no command screen. Where nothing works and I guess there is a reason for it so that people don't accidentally mess things up. Alright, so the trick to go past this no command screen is press the top right button and slide up from the bottom of the screen to enter the actual recovery mode which again says that you are in the Android recovery mode with the catfish version. Now you can either swipe up or down to move around the menu and swipe right or left to select. Currently it's on reboot system now, which will simply restart the watch. You can also press the bottom right button to move to the next option and press the top right button to select this particular option. Next is Reboot Bootloader, which as discussed earlier will restart the watch to the bootloader screen again. Next option is Apply Update from ADB. ADB stands for Android Debug Bridge, where you can apply updates via ADB, which we are not going to talk about in this video and I will recommend you to refrain from entering it unless you know what you are doing. Next option is apply update from SD card. I don't know how you will update from SD card in this watch. This option is available on most of the Android phones so that you can apply updates via SD card. But I guess this option is for other Wear OS smartwatches which has an option for expandable storage. Anyways, let's move on. Next option is wipe data slash factory reset. This is why you all are here for. So if your watch is bricked or the screen is frozen and nothing is working and you want to erase everything from the watch, then you have to enter the recovery mode and select this option and the watch will factory reset to the original state as it was when it came out of the box, which I'm not going to do it now. Now the next option is wipe cache partition. This will wipe all the data from the cache partition. The cache partition is a partition in the hard drive which is used as a memory to temporarily store the data. Again, this is not the objective of this video and I would advise you to refrain from going in here. Moving on, it's the mount system. This is more of an engineering or a development function. This menu item simply mounts the file system. This would only be relevant for an unlocked device that would then allow access to the file system for additional testing. As I showed you earlier in the bootloader that the device status of this watch said locked, so I assume we won't be able to mount systems. Let's move on to the next option which is view recovery logs. This allows to view the system log like software updates etc. Moving on the next option is run graphic test. This is a very basic self-test function that 
performs a series of screen tests on the watch by displaying a sequence of images and actions on the screen. This images and action will complete automatically and return you back to the recovery mode. There is no pass fail feedback in here. This test simply is a mean of determining whether the screen is operating or not. So if you have a screen with a malfunctional pixels, it will show up in this test. Next option is run local test, which are some local tests as shown in this video linked up here, which I did for the fossil gen 5, which you can check it out once you're done watching this one. And lastly, it's the power off. This will basically shut down the watch. So that's it with the bootloader and the recovery mode on the TicWatch Pro 2020. Now with the information shown in this video, you can sort of get yourself out of any awkward situation of your watch like a frozen app, non-functional screen, a corrupted third-party app or watch face. But again, I will reiterate that this is an uncharted territory. So enter at your own discretion and refrain from entering any options you are not aware about unless you really know what you're doing. But either way, I just wanted to show you guys all the options available in the bootloader and rationalize them at my best capabilities. I also want you guys to know that you can chat with me directly on my Discord server, linked in the description of this video and there you can also discuss and troubleshoot a lot of smartwatches and smartphones. So if you are on Discord, join me on my server. With that being said, I really hope you found this video helpful. If you did, then please give this video a thumbs up. It really means a lot. Thank you so much for watching and take care. I'll catch you guys in the next one.